Peace, peace, peace. This is your international sales and marketing expert, Tiger Toledo. And you already know what it is, man. You rocking with the best. You heard? Peace and love to you guys. I hope you guys are having a fabulous day today. I hope you are having a fabulous day today and profitable. Profitable days makes the day so much better. So, ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to talk to you today about have you ever wondered why certain companies can ask for astronomical prices for their products or services? You ever wondered how they're able to grab and attract clients near and far to buy their products or services at like ridiculous amounts of money? Well, I'm here to share some of the information with you on how you can stop attracting cheap, no money ass clients and start attracting more affluent high end clients. Okay. So I hope strap in your uh, seat belts because it's going to be a nice roller coaster ride. And before I do that, let me give a couple of shout outs. Thank you guys for tuning in. Carlito, what's up, brother? Hey, if you are an entrepreneur, I'd really appreciate you sharing this video with your fellow entrepreneurs. Thank you, Carlito, for all the shares that you've done on your page, brother. Okay, so here's the thing. I have a picture of Artemar Peugeot watches up there that you can see. Those three watches that you're looking at, those are Artemars, right? And an Artemar watch can run anywhere from 11000 to about $1.1 million, right? Now, you can take a watch from Walmart which you can possibly get for, I don't know, five, eight, ten, twenty dollars. And then you can look at a watch like from Artemar Peugeot from Swiss that will range anywhere from ten thousand to one point one million dollars. Now you ask yourself, how are those numbers so ridiculously far apart? And I'm gonna explain that to you right now. When you go into a place like that, it could be Hermes or any luxury place. What they do is they limit the amount of production that they put out. Okay. So if you went to a place like Walmart, you can go to basically any Walmart and just grab watches off of the rack, take it to the cashier or the self checkout aisle and purchase that watch with no interruption. But for you to go into a place like Artemar or, you know, Rolex dealer or, you know, Ross, places like that, there is a waiting list for you to purchase their product. They're not just going to freely give you their product like that. They'll let you know, like, hey, the minimum order is this. Okay. And we only make maybe 4,000 of these watches. Now, because it is in a limited supply, it makes it more attractive. Back in New York, we used to say, like, it, let's say you bought a, a fresh new pair of Nikes, right? That you thought you went somewhere far to purchase and nobody else on the block would have them. And the next thing you know, somebody said, man, them some fresh Nikes you got on. He goes out and he buys those same Nikes. We used to say, damn, son, you on my dick. Excuse the profanity, but that's what we used to say. Damn, son, you on my dick, son. Right? So we would hate when someone would imitate us. We, we liked being original. We liked to be exclusive. And exclusivity pulls in certain type of clients. Now, if you have a product that you're pushing in huge amounts of volume, I'm letting you know right now, it diminishes 
your brand integrity. That's like Coca-Cola asking for you to pay $500 for a can of Coke that you could get anywhere. But if they roll out a very limited edition of a 1975 bottle that they used to make, and there's only a very small run of it, then they can ask for $500. You guys understand what I'm saying? Does that make sense? The lower production run you have, the more money you can ask for. And you have to not look so readily accessible. Meaning, let's say you have a service that you're offering clients. If you say, yeah, I could be there in 30 minutes, you look too accessible. You have to position yourself to the point where you say, look, I cannot get to you for another three hours, five hours, a day, three days. That makes you, it's all about perception now. It's the perception of you look like you're in high demand. When you look like you're in high demand, people treat you like you are in high demand. When you start to value your time, people begin to value your time. But if you're like, hey, I got, you know, I was just having lunch with my kids, but I could drop this in and run over to you and take care of you so you can go about your day. You're valuing their time more than your own. So therefore, you must be cheap, inexpensive. Okay. So again, ask yourself, why are you charging? To, like, I know a person that has, that should be charging at least $5,000 for their course. Five grand, easy. Yes, he may not get a lot of people, but we're not looking at volume. We're looking at margins. We're looking at profit margins. Business is about profit margins, not about, hey, I serviced a million people. The teller at your bank don't give a fuck. The teller at your bank is going to tell you that your account is in the negative. It's about profits and margins. They have a problem. You have a solution. You pair it up. And you charge them a premium price for what they need. Otherwise, let them keep their damn problem and go find somebody else. Now, another thing that you have to keep in mind is that, and a lot of people overlook this. Robert Kiyosaki, a lot of you guys may know Robert Kiyosaki. If you don't, he is the author of Rich Dad, Poor Dad. Right. And one of the things that he said is that if you want to have any type of financial literacy or you want to learn about money or learn how money moves, you must understand the language. You must understand the verbiage. You must speak and understand these terms like ROI and net and gross and how em employees speak a certain way. Business owners speak a certain way. Investors speak a certain way. They use different type of language. One of the reasons why you're attracting cheap clients is because your verbiage sounds cheap. Now, let's go back to the watch. If you went to Walmart, the average person that's going to show you you know, one of the watches is basically going to say, call it a watch, right? But if you went to a place like a Rolex or Artemar or any of these other places, they're going to call it a timepiece. See, your verbiage and your sales copy can dictate who is attracted to you just by what you write or what you say. You can disqualify a lot of the people that are looking for, man, you're too much. They could just read your headline or maybe read a little bit of your sales copy and say, 
This person's too expensive. I'm not even going to try to call them. You must change the way you speak and the way you write. If you're saying, okay, I'll give you an example. I use my notary business, for instance, right? If I said cheapest notary in town, do you know my phone would just ring off the hook? People looking for just a cheap, inexpensive price. That is not what I want. I would prefer a higher paying client. So I have to change the verbiage of that. You know, you have to change the verbiage of what you use. If you want to attract higher paying clients, let I'll give you another example. Look up, look up a Hyundai vehicle. Just Google it. Whenever you have time, just Google Hyundai vehicles and see how they explain what a Hyundai vehicle is. Then go and look up Bugatti and see how they explain what a Bugatti is. Appreciate that, Andre Hatchet. Salute to you, brother. I see you on tour, man. San Diego, Texas, Atlanta. Shout out to you, brother. Hey, hey, Andre, real, real talk, real love. You need to mark them prices way high. You need to mark those prices 10 times above. Because the, the information that you share on your business, brother, dude, people are guaranteed to make thousands of dollars. I've, I've made thousands of dollars off of your course. So I know that it is marginally underpriced. Strike them prices up, brother. So going back to a Hyundai, if you were to look up a Hyundai and how they would explain a Hyundai, hey, you have alloy wheels and, you know, fucking canvas seats and, you know, plastic interior and all that foo-foo shit. And for someone that can afford a Hyundai, that sounds very attractive. That sounds very attractive. But a person that looks up a Bugatti, Italian leather interior, you know, 7.1 liter engine, zero to fucking a hundred and two seconds, that, that kind of shit, performance, high performance. And then they're going to charge you $3 million for that Bugatti. The verbiage is different. Listen to me. That is your first thing that you need to change. If you don't change anything else, look at the type of speech and the type of sales copy that you're using, the text that you're using, and say, is this attracting the type of clients that I want? Is this attracting the clients that I want? Am I a Capital One MasterCard? Or am I an American Express black card? Look up that, that type of verbiage. Okay, and I've got, oh, hold on. Let me read a couple of comments. Check the site. They all went up. Rock on, brother. Okay, we got Londo here. He said, what do you think about this strategy? Instead of reducing your price to gain customers, how about offering different inventory to the customers. So what would you do with the, your pricing that you currently have? See, you have to understand something, Londo. People make most of their money off of the higher tier product, right? And I'll explain to you how that works. McDonald's makes a good amount of money, right? But they have a high level sales where it is you can buy a franchise for a million dollars. Now, when you purchase that franchise, 
you'll only make a hundred thousand dollars a year. So it's going to take you about 10 years to make that million dollars back. Plus of course, you know, overhead expenses and payroll and stuff like that. But they're getting the million dollars up front, up front. So that goes towards to, you know, more marketing, more sales, you know, more infrastructure, more technology. You have to look at it that way. Uber, you have your regular Uber and then you have Uber black. You have Uber black, Uber black is making a marginally amount of money than regular Uber. Regular Uber is just a, the, the, the low tier, low hanging fruit of their operation. Now, as they roll out Uber black, where you can get luxury sedans, luxury vehicles, luxury limousines, they're charging you two, three, four times more than an independent limo driver. How can you take your product and cater to a more affluent client? Now, Londo has a limousine business. One, one of the things that I'll do, I'll share this with you, Londo. One of the things that I would do on my website, I would change the verbiage of it, right? I will start changing and tweaking the verbiage. If you need some uh, inspiration on how to change the verbiage, read the Rob report, right? Read how, take industries that have nothing to do with what you got going on and use some of their wording to explain your services. For instance, you're a limousine service, right? Tap into a company that supplies private planes tap into a company that supplies uh luxury yachts take some of the wording that they use on that they'll they'll say shit like rediscover the world you know what the fuck does that mean right rediscover the world or you know we only catered to the top 1%. Dude, who is that? Who is the 1%? I'll tell you who is that. The 1% know who they are. And that's who they want. You don't want something that you know the average person can afford. That's why people pay premium dollars for closing lines like maybe Bape. Bape sells a t-shirt for $110. That is $110 for a t-shirt like that versus you go to Walmart or Target and buy a t-shirt for $5. So now when the person, that young little kid walks around with a Supreme or Bape shirt, they're instantly like, look, perceive, remember, it's all about perception. They're looked at as, dude, you got it going on. You just spent 90 to $110 for a t-shirt. You a rock star. You're a fucking rock star. When you see someone with an Hermes bag, a Hermes purse, that is a one year wait. You have to wait one year to buy a minimum $10,000 bag. I don't think you heard me. You have to wait a year to buy their cheapest bag, which is $10,000. That is building anticipation. That is building the, the value of the brand. Like, oh, I can't wait. That's why when you, if you went on YouTube and you typed in unboxing, you typed in unboxing of Hermes or uh, Artemore, people were making like elaborate videos about those about those uh, products because they had to wait a while. And when they got it, they was like, man, I got to make a video of this shit. I got to make a video of it. I got to show people that I actually got one. 
the Rolls Royce Phantom 8 is out. You got to damn near buy that shit a year and a half prior. So make people wait. Yeah, you may lose some clients, but the clients that you have that you do get from that are going to be paying three, four, five times more. Because people love exclusivity. So shout out to all you guys that tuned in. Peace and love and happiness to you. I hope you got some information out of this that was very helpful. If you have fellow entrepreneurs that can find this information helpful, share this on your page. And by the way, sales and marketing bootcamp is live in effect. You can get complimentary access. See? Instead of saying free, you can use complimentary access. I just I just want to throw that out there so you guys can pay attention to your verbiage. Ask yourself, look at your look at your marketing material, look at the way you're talking to the clients and ask yourself, do you even sound cheap? Heck, if you really want to know, voice record yourself on one of your live phone calls or sales calls or whatever. And listen to yourself and say, damn, do I sound cheap? Do I sound like I would be a premium product that I'm selling a pre premium product? That is the best way to self-analyze yourself. Record yourself. Record yourself and listen to your spiel. And that way you'll know. So peace, love, and happiness to all you guys. Salute. And I'll talk to you guys soon. You heard? <laughs>